go straight across now to uh, yet another person whose team has been there at the thick of it all. They were the first to enter that tunnel of danger with the determination to save those lives. Joining us, Sri Atul Karwal, the DG NDRF. Uh, sir, thank you very much for speaking with uh, CNN News 18. Namaste and Jai Hind. Last 17 days, as you look back with relief and happiness, can you take us through the entire journey? What went over the last 17 days? Uh, the thing started on Diwali, as you know, early in the morning. And uh, it had so many setbacks in between. Initially, the sixth day, I mean, let's take it from the beginning. The first organ machine was not powerful enough after six. Then there was some rumbling in the roof of the tunnel, which approaches the disaster site. And interestingly enough, the expert there told me that this part of the tunnel is more unsafe and less stable compared to the one in which the workers are trapped. Therefore, this also had to be made secure. From the auger machine close to the exit of the tunnel, an escape route was put in place so that if something happens on top of the auger machine, people can still escape and come out. And when the rumblings happened on the sixth day, people ran out thinking that another cave-in is going to happen and they might get buried under it. So these kind of things were happening. And the auger machine was finding it difficult to go through because multiple breakdowns were happening since the roof of the tunnel, which had metal lattice and girders, had collapsed along with the debris from the cave-in and was in the path of the auger machine. And finally, as you know, the auger machine was uh, partly successful, I think, uh, majorly, I would say, out of about 60 meters, it had done about 47 meters. But we couldn't do the rest of the 10 meters with that. Hmm. But there was a lot of parallel processing in place. Indeed. We did not want to put all our eggs in the auger basket, understanding that this is one solution which might fail. And multiple solutions were not just put in place, but actually made nearly operational. So that if this fails, we are already uh, partway through to the next solution and we don't lose time. When, when, did, uh, when was first contact established with those who were stuck inside? What was their mindset at that time? And how easy or difficult was it to navigate, negotiate multiple departments, multiple uh, different uh, entities who had pitched in for the rescue efforts? I have found the fortitude of people stuck inside really high. Inspirational, actually. Hmm. The communication link was established in the first few days. And then the families were talking to them and high functionaries who would visit would speak to them. I had the chance to speak to the foreman, uh, and he was so upbeat and he had a strong voice. Uh, Saba was the foreman there inside. When I asked him that, have you worked out a sequence of rescue once we reach you, who would come first? He said, we have got it all figured out. We will send the laborers out first. The experienced workers will exit thereafter, and I as the foreman would exit the last. So this communication was something which was keeping their spirits up. Plus. Wow. They had oxygen, they had breathing space, they had lights, they had two kilometers of tunnel behind them, food and water. The only thing which was bothering them probably was the possibility that something really critically goes wrong and they're not able to get out. Hmm. I also felt that being experienced tunnel workers, they had clarity on the issue more than some of us, that this is a hopeful situation and sooner or later they would get out because multiple approaches were being Gee. sought and being worked upon. Regarding the agencies which were there, uh, two officers I saw doing a wonderful job, Secretary Morth, the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, Anurag Jain, and Mahmood Ahmed, who is the MD of the uh, NHI DCL. We would have multiple meetings during the day with all the experts coming in and giving their point of view, including geologists, etc., to work out what should we try and when. Uh, for example, vertical tunneling, tunneling was put on hold since that vibration might cause a cave-in on the nearly successful auger horizontal tunnel. Hmm. So things had to be uh, brought from across the country, roads built up, equipment put in place, but not switched on and started because something else was nearly there right. and we need to be very sure what we start and when. Well, the second auger machine, I remember day 12, uh, somewhere thereabouts, uh, just about 10 to 12 meters to bore through. And uh, the whole mood was, we're going to power through it in the next few hours, it's going to happen. And then suddenly that auger machine snaps, things are all then pulled back a few days. Uh, how was that, uh, you know, to take? 
as far as the mindset is concerned and uh, in terms of the overall morale and who came up with the suggestion of the rat miners? Uh, we were very hopeful it will happen that evening. And the people had even started thinking of their return journey because Indeed. it would have happened in the evening or late evening and would be over by morning. Hmm. And when it actually didn't happen and something went wrong again, uh, then the rat miners, rat hole miners option was always there. Hmm. But the feeling was that if we recalibrate and we give it by final push hmm. uh, with the presumption that the debris on the other end, the last few meters may not be very tightly packed. Hmm. Therefore, a good heavy push towards the end might see us through very quickly was what was thought of. Hmm. But uh, over a period of time, we saw that looking for early quick solutions was putting us back. Okay. And a slow and steady solution, more short, short solution was something that we could have thought of earlier. But there's an eagerness to get hmm. through and retrieve them as soon as possible. And we were hopeful that this last push would see us through. Hmm. So when it did not, and we realized that the auger would keep breaking down and eventually as you know it uh, encountered metal in front and the whole drill and the helical screw behind it got stuck it was a huge operation for the next two two and a half days to get into the tunnel cut hmm. in bits and pieces and drag it all out to reach the end of the tunnel so hmm. risking that uh, blockage again was not worth it so then the stow and steady solution was thought of and the rat hole miners were put in place, which I am so inspired by them. Uh, those are claustrophobic places, uh, dark, hmm. uh, some breathing difficulty as well. Hmm. And to sit there for hours and uh, scrape away at the uh, debris in front, moving inch by inch, uh, requires huge toughness hmm. and tenacity. Very, very well said, sir. Uh, but... Uh... The CM's office was directly involved because it was the incident happened in Uttarkashi. But was the Prime Minister involved, uh, him and his office? Yes, that was inspiring uh, because the uh, ex advisor to the PMO, Bhaskar Khulbe Saab, was there, Abhinisho. Uh, one other officer, Mangesh Galdial, was there from the PMO, staying put in place till the operation got through. And everything was being briefed up to the uh, PM's office. Also, the kind of uh, resources which were being made available. Heavy machines were moved by road from Balsar in Gujarat and mm. from Odisha across the country. Green corridors were being organized by the local police. So, was no, uh, nothing was left undone. Anything that we could ask for was made available right away and it couldn't have happened because uh, without the PMO's support. Mm. So, that was very motivating. Also, interesting thing I want to narrate here is that my office kept a lot of emails Indeed. about uh, suggestions from experts across the country who had a suggestion for me saying, why don't you try this? Fantastic. I'm a civil engineer. I have this experience. Why don't you try this? It was as if the whole nation was looking over our shoulder, uh, hoping for a quick success and putting their might behind us. So the SDRF, the NDRF is right at the face of danger. You're the first to there, reach out there to help in rescue efforts. So tell us something about the team, the NDRF team itself. How difficult, unique was this rescue operation compared to some of the other tasks that your team has taken up? Uh, when the, on the sixth day, there was a rumble on the, uh, in the roof of the tunnel, which was the approach for the disaster site. People rushed out thinking there's a cave in. NDRF rescuers were one of the first to venture in and then inspire others to come back and start working. We were given situations in which we will be finally required to intervene and extricate the trap rescuers. Mm. The horizontal tunnel which was being done was not so difficult, except that there was a calculation that the pipe would emerge 20 feet above the floor of the sea, uh, tunnel on the other side. Mm. So how to negotiate that drop and how to get people into that pipe 20 feet above. So we had to plan for that. The other solution of vertical tunnel being done was that eventually you might have to get people out from a 22 inch wide hole, hmm. 90 meters down. And that hole might have steel grating at the bottom and girders. So you have to go down there with equipment right. and cut the metal to actually open that 22 inch opening. So how to do that? We probably had to use self-contained breathing apparatus and other things like that. So we, you would imagine each of these situations and then prepare and rehearse for it. Mm. So the officers and boys, they were all the time 
rehearsing and working that if a b c d comes am i prepared for it in any manner but uh, kudos to all of them and phenomenal work that they have done as you look back at this uh, the last 17 days no one left behind be it within the country or uh, elsewhere across the world are we living up to that promise and lessons going forward final question sir this was a unique thing for us we had not encountered a tunnel rescue since 2015 in belaspur himachal we had done it once uh so what i understand is the kind of resource mobilization i saw the kind of support i saw from the highest office in the country uh the openness to learning not just from the foreign experts but even the rat hole miners uh, from the huge spectrum of experience and expertise and accessed openly uh the tenacity and the determination which people showed by staying put and seeing it through day after day after day talking to them hmm. the uh, fortitude as i mentioned of the people trapped inside not losing heart let me share with you here that when the finally the access was possible uh, many of them came out on their own hmm. they didn't need to be pulled through stretchers which we had painstakingly prepared for wheeling them out they were upbeat they were strong and they were So the spirit sub so much, so it's a huge uh, learning to see the uh, potential of human spirit. Uh, caught in disaster or those who are trying to rescue, if we get together, I think we can do the seemingly impossible. Congratulations to you and your team, sir. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you, sir. Namaste.